Welcome. Let's talk about my 2020 NHL playoff predictions for round one. Now, I'm wearing a New York Rangers shirt because just hours ago they won the uh, draft lottery. And for those of you who aren't Rangers fans, eh, give them a break. They haven't had a first round pick since 1965. It's been a while. So, anyways, uh, let's get to it here. Starting off um, out west with the Vegas Golden Knights and the Chicago Blackhawks here. Chicago upset the Oilers, um, and they probably showed a bit more offense from their defense than we all thought was possible. They got some key goaltending here and there. Crawford was half decent, um, and they potentially have a lot of depth scoring-wise on that team if they could all get going at the same time, kind of like last year more or less, but um, let's be honest, Vegas has got one of the most well-rounded teams in the NHL, and after they picked out Leonard, I mean, they have no elite player, per se, one, one could argue with me about uh, Stone, but they have a lot of good to great players, so yeah, I'm going with Vegas here. Um, next up, let's head out east, and let's talk about the Montreal Canadiens versus the Philadelphia Flyers. This could be an upset here, couldn't it? Um, I don't know. If, if Carey Price continues to stand on his head and Montreal continues to play that sort of suffocating neutral zone trap kind of game, could we see another upset? I mean, Carter Hart's really good, but is he ready for this? For the playoffs? Uh, Philly has been a, a great team all year long. There's no denying that. Uh, Alan Vigno seems to do the best with the teams he, he arrives in within the first few years. Um, I'm going with Philly on this one. Um, you thought I was going to say Montreal, didn't you? <laughs> no. Let's head out back west and let's talk about the Arizona Coyotes in the Colorado Avalanche. Now, Arizona squeaked by Nashville. Or one might say a, a bit more than that. I mean, they've got great goaltending. Um, they got a couple of X factors that could still break out, and Taylor Hall and and, uh, and Phil Kessel, plus some other guys who can score here and there and chip in, like Connor Garland and and so on. So, and then Colorado, uh, one of the probably going to be one of the most dominating teams in the NHL for years to come with the kind of draft pool and prospects they have, not to mention the players they have there already. And the goaltending seems to be going on, going all right at the moment. Um, it might not be quite to the same level as, as Phoenix's. We'll see. This is the playoffs, though. Um, I think both of these sets of goalies, um, I mean, Grubauer's been there before as well, uh, so there's that. Uh, anyways, I'll just, I'm going with Colorado. No, no upset here. Um, let's go back out east. Let's talk about uh, Tampa and the Columbus Blue Jackets. <sighs> Columbus suffocated the hell out of Toronto's offense, right? And they scored just enough to get by, really. Uh, I mean, those 3 nothing games were more like 2 nothing games, and one of those 2 nothing goals was usually a fluky one by a deflection. But that's all they need. And they just, you know, they just choke that other team. They forecheck the hell out of you. Um, and their goaltending just, we had, I had some questions about that going in to the play-ins. Um, but, and both of them have had, you know, off times in, in games. But really, both goaltenders have got fantastic numbers. And there's Tampa, who should be ready to take it all. Shouldn't they? Problem is, Hedman... Their number one defenseman is out again in these to start these playoffs. Well, he could be. I don't know that for sure because, you know, no one really knows anything about uh, injuries. But uh, Stamkos is also out as well, one of their top three forwards, their captain. And, yeah, it's this, they play a similar style of Toronto, don't, don't they? They have a, a sturdier defense, yes, I know. And Columbus is without Panarin this time around, and, and Duchesne, who, who was a point per game in last year's playoffs, uh, almost, or was close to. Uh, Dezingle, they had Bobrovsky, 
but Bobrovsky doesn't matter now. Zingle didn't really do too much. Um, and yeah, Panarin, Duchesne, but it was good enough uh, against Toronto. I, yeah, it's my first upset really here. I'm going with uh, Columbus, believe it or not. It, now, if, if Hedman gets into the lineup, I may eat my words here, but um, yeah, I'm going with the Blue Jackets. Uh, next, back out west. This fan is just right in my face. It's making me blink a lot or something. There we go. Okay. Um, let's talk about Calgary and Dallas. Could this be a tough one to judge? I don't know. I mean, Dallas, again, is in the same breadth as sort of Columbus somewhat, uh, maybe even the Islanders, in that they play a really suffocating defense first kind of style with two really good goaltenders. Um, the difference this year is that they don't have Zuccarello, who was fantastic in last year's playoffs for them, but they have Pavelski and Perry instead. Um, Pavelski, we'll see if he steps up. He had a he had an off year, and Perry was like, Meh. but he could provide that sandpaper for them. Calgary, on the other hand, um, kind of got a little bit lucky, maybe. I mean, a lot of Winnipeg Jets key players got injured. Like Shifley and and Line A, um, and Appleton, I want to say, uh, a lot of Winnipeg players went down, but they got some really good goaltending from Cam Talbot as well. And is their offense woke? <laughs> Too soon. Um, are they going to stay woke for this series? I don't know. I don't know. I I feel that um, I feel like Dallas is a safer pick here. So that's who I'm going with. Sorry, Flame fans. Um, next, let's head back out east, and let's talk about the Islanders and the Washington Capitals. This is a really tough one, isn't it? Because um, on here you have Trotz, the Washington's former head coach, um, who is now coached by Trotz's ex-assistant coach, and it's kind of like friends. You know, everyone's dating everyone else all the time. It's just a <laughs> musical chair. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, this, it, it's kind of a, up to Holpe here, isn't it? Like, it, he's had a bad year. Um, they're the young rookie goaltender, who I just can't think of at this moment, his name. I keep on getting Shesterkin in my head, and that's the Rangers goalie. Uh, you know who I mean. I just can't think of it at the moment. Uh, he's, he's, he's not playing. He's, uh, he's, he's still injured, I believe. So it's it's Hopi's reigns right now. He's been known to flip a switch and be amazing in the playoffs. Can he still do that? That was what 2000, yeah, 2018 there. Ah, uh, they have got enough offense. We all know that they forecheck the hell out of you. Um, the Islanders, that's yeah, pretty straightforward. That you know that tight suffocating game. They have Pajot this time around though. Um, so that's really given them a bit more depth. He's um, defensively responsible, and he chips in on the offense as well. Of course, they have Varlamov instead of Leonard, which is a, a little bit of a downgrade. This is so... I don't know. I'm going with the Islanders. This is another upset. Um, this is... An, uh, this is like Washington hoping could play lights out, and they can go all the way to the finals, really. You know, but um, that's who I'm picking. Moving back out west, let's talk about Vancouver and St. Louis. I don't think anyone's really uh, double guessing this one, uh, except for Canuck fans, maybe. But St. Louis is, again, like Vegas, one of the best well rounded teams in the league. Thing is, can Bennington, his, he's had some off time, on and off times this regular season. Can he show up big in the playoffs again? Allen, he's kind of a question mark. He could be amazing or awful. Um, and Canucks, can Markstrom continue playing his game? Um, he's been pretty good. Not terrific, but really good. Um, it's Vancouver's defense is, is thinner than St. Louis. Anyway, I'm going with St. Louis. They could be getting back Tarasenko as well. Um, they should be getting back Tarasenko. And um, maybe it'll take them a little longer, like the like a lot of these uh, round robin teams, to get their their motor really going. Because teams like Vancouver and the Play-ins have 
been playing meaningful hockey for longer, but uh, yeah, that's not a surprise there. St. Louis. Uh, last team up here we're going to talk about is the Carolina Hurricanes and the uh, Boston Bruins. Whew. Um, Carolina looks better this season. My biggest question mark for going in, even to the play-ins, was, of course, goaltending. Can Mazar uh, Mazarek? Mazarek. Um, can, what's he going to be like? Because he wasn't great that great last playoffs. He had some really good games, really bad games. So far, he's been good. Um, and, and Reimer stepped in and played really amazing, too. But these guys, for me, are just so hot and cold in terms of goaltending. Um... And then it comes, and then there's, there's, you know, there's, uh, there's Hamilton, who was injured, who might be coming back, I'm not sure, um, and Pesci as well, who's just gone, he's with his sh shoulder injury, so those were big holes, but Vatanen, um, and, uh, oh my god, who was the other player I'm trying to think of right now, in any case, um, they had two new defensemen who stepped in, I'll think of them in a second, and they played pretty decent. For, especially Vatten, he played really well. Shmetsnikov looks a lot better this season. Aho looks inspiring. Um, on the Boston side, they didn't look good at all in the in the round robins, did they? But it's the round robin game, you know. Maybe some of the players aren't taking it as seriously. I know they had troubles getting started, you know. Um, with was it Kashe? We're not sure if he tested positive or not for COVID-19, and... And Pasternak had to sit out for a while. So, although Boston looked like the best team during the regular season, and they went to the Stanley Cup Finals, obviously, last season, they could just as easily do it again. They could win this whole damn thing, couldn't they? But I'm going with Carolina. <laughs> I'm nuts. I'll probably eat my shorts on that last one. Um, but there you have it. Uh, I would love to hear who you think, what your picks are um, in these series and why. And uh, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Please be kind to each other out there and I'll see you soon.